Hallelujah. Grace and peace, beloved. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice. Let's be glad in it in Jesus' name. I'm glad you tuned in today for today's message. Amen. God is going to really, really show up and show out. That's my prayer. That's my belief. That's my confidence. Amen. That I have in him. Now, listen, if you're celebrating a special day in the month of November, I want to say happy special day to you. God bless you. Enjoy your day in Jesus Christ. Also, I want to give a shout out to all of the NBCC members, hallelujah, worldwide. God bless you. This month, we celebrate 23 years of Christian ministry in the world. Amen. God has been faithful year after year, and we thank God for his faithfulness. Join us. If you're in the Detroit metropolitan area, join us. Glory be to God. You'll get the information after, at the end of the service. Amen. As how you can join us next Sunday on November 12th as we come together and celebrate, hallelujah, 23 years of Christian ministry. Now, right now, I want to ask you to ask God to reveal to you one, two, three people that you can share this message with and then follow up with them and have a conversation about it. Find out what their takeaways from are. Find out what impact it made in their life and then share yours with them as the Bible teaches us the principle of iron sharpening iron in Jesus' name. Now, right now, I would encourage you to sit back and watch this video, which will give you our framework for today's message. The video is entitled Invincible. And then right after the video, I'll be back to share with you today's message, which is entitled God Makes You Undefeatable in Christ. Also, when I come back, we're going to celebrate the Holy Communion. So get your elements together. See you in a few. God bless. Life can bring us storms. Those moments where we wander, wonder, doubt. The journey doesn't stop, but the progress does. It can be lonely, painful. Sometimes we try to stare it down, as if we could somehow will it to go away or we think we can go toe to toe and come out the other side, unscathed. We often forget just how small we are. The truth is, storms are inevitable, but when they appear, we have a protector, a savior who knows a thing or two about calming storms. A God who is a stronghold in times of trouble. In our weakness, He is strong. In our fear, He is courage. In our desperation, He is peace. Yes, storms are inevitable. But our God is invincible. Praise God for his invincibility, right? Thank you, God, for being an invincible God. Thank you, God, for being the type of God that is invincible, that nothing can conquer you. Hallelujah. And because, God, we are in Christ and we're in relationship with you, we believe that we, too, share and are able to partake, hallelujah, of your godly nature. Amen. That we, too, can become invincible in Jesus name, as it relates to the attacks of the enemy and sin and so forth. God, we thank you today in Jesus name. Now, beloved, I've asked you to gather your elements for Holy Communion. Let's pray over them that we may partake of the Lord's Supper today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ultimate sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, who is, O oh Lord God, our atonement. We thank you for him being our Messiah, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for uh, allowing him to die for us. And we thank you, God, 
that you have received his sacrifice and for once and for all the penalty has been paid and that we are forgiven from all of our sins and cleansed from all unrighteousness. We pray now over these elements that they will, Father God, serve as a symbol of the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, and that by partaking of them that we will, O Lord God, receive every benefit by faith, by grace through faith, in Jesus' name, we decree and declare that it is so, and so it is. Amen. But praise be to God. Hallelujah. According to the scriptures, let us eat together and let us drink together. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, family. Amen. Now listen. Today, we're going to talk about being undefeatable. Amen. As I introduce this new sermon series to you, I want you to think about how God being invincible and how we, the Bible says that we're able to become partakers of the divine nature of God because God has given us great and precious promises. And by them, through the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace, we can become partakers of the divine nature of God, thereby escaping all of the corruption that's in this world through lust. So beloved, we have a chance right now through the Holy Spirit, by the grace of God to exchange and partake, hallelujah, of the invisibility of God and incorporate and appropriate that into our lives in Jesus' name by faith, amen, through faith. And so today I want you to listen to these scriptures. Watch this. In the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 21, you'll find these words printed. May God strengthen, complete, perfect, and make you what you ought to be and equip you with everything good that you may carry out his will while he himself works in you and accomplishes that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, to whom be the glory forever and ever to the ages of ages. Amen so be it. It is so. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 says, but thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumph as trophies of Christ's victory and through us spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. So far the word of God. Amen. Now I want to tag today's message God makes you undefeatable. Amen. God makes you undefeatable. Now, the principle that I want to lift up today, the primary principle is this. It's the undefeatable spirit principle of the believer who is in Christ. Amen. Now, this principle or the spirit of the undefeatable spirit does not mean or imply that you will not suffer losses. Amen. In fact, you will suffer losses. But, beloved, what this means is, is that you do not have, nor do you adapt the defeatist attitude or mentality. You believe, as a believer, hallelujah, that in Christ, God will always lead you in triumph. Amen? You believe that no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what, hallelujah, you've gone through, amen, hallelujah, you will be undefeatable in Jesus' name, meaning that you cannot be defeated. Now, you may lose, glory be to God. You may have some setbacks, but you will not quit, amen? I think I shared this principle with you before, that it's not over when you lose, it's over when you quit. As long as you don't quit, glory be to God, you will not be defeated. You become undefeatable as long as you don't quit. So I wanna encourage you today, Amen. With the undefeatable spirit principle that you do not, glory be to God, believe in your spirit, believe in your soul person, your soul man, that you can be defeated as long as you do not quit. Amen. Now, an example of this, of a defeatist attitude is this. Listen to this. And I really laughed at this example. Watch this. A defeatist person, a person who has a defeatist attitude, they are convinced that he or she is going to fail. 
I don't care what you say, what you do. I don't care how it may stack, be stacked in their favor. They are convinced that they are going to fail. And he or she is a surprise when they do fail. So they are convinced that they're going to fail. And then when they do fail, they're not surprised. This is how a defeatist person, listen to this. This is how a defeatist person might propose to his girlfriend. I'm sure you're going to say no. So why don't you just go ahead and reject me now? <laughs> I'm sure you're going to say no. So just go ahead and reject me now. That's a defeatist attitude. I want to ask you today, do you suffer as a believer with a defeatist attitude? In fact, I want to say that that's an oxymoron. How can you be a believer and suffer from a defeatist attitude? How can you believe in the victorious Jesus Christ, glory be to God, and have a defeatist attitude? I mean, it sounds like the disciples, when they first heard that Jesus Christ had died, especially those two guys that were walking on the road to Emmaus. And the Bible says that Jesus came and their eyes were fixed that they couldn't, they were beholden, so they couldn't recognize him. And when he exchanged conversation with them, they said, uh, haven't you heard that our Savior died, our Lord died, and we thought by now, you know, they had already accepted defeat. They had already accepted that the loss, hallelujah, that his death was permanent in Jesus' name. They already thought that it was over. They already thought that this momentary, hallelujah, something that he told them would happen, that they would come and take his body. He was going to give it. They accepted that as final. Saints of God, I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. Your condition is your current condition does not and is not your conclusion if you are a believer. Listen, I want to encourage you today to adapt the uh, uh, the undefeatable spirit that you adapt that, adopt that in your life and then adapt to it in Jesus name. Make the needed adjustments in your life. Let God renew your mind. Praise be to God as we get into the scriptures today. Hallelujah. Let God renew your mind as it relates to this in Jesus name. Listen, I want to encourage you, the saints of God, you don't have to accept, hallelujah, that every loss, hallelujah, spells or ends in your ultimate and final defeat. Amen. Now, I'm not saying that you go through life unscathed. I'm not saying that you're going to go through life and go through uh, relationships, hallelujah, unscathed, unharmed, never disappointed. No, I'm saying to you that you will not be defeated in Jesus name. That's what I'm saying to you today based upon the scripture. Now, listen to this. The enemy, hallelujah, wants you to believe that you are defeated before you even try. I said the enemy wants you to believe that you are defeated before you even try. Why does he want you to believe that? Because saints of God, he does not want you even to get out there to try. He does not want you to even think for one moment that you have a chance in the world to make a difference, to live your life with purpose, to live your life on purpose. He wants you to keep on meandering through life, never, ever believing, hallelujah, in the future and in the hope and the expected end that God has for you. He wants you to accept defeat, hallelujah, before you even start. And saints of God, declare with me right now, the devil is a liar and the truth is not in him in Jesus name. See, the enemy wants you to have this type of soul set where your thoughts and your feelings and your choices align with his attitude, that attitude of being defeated before you even start, before you even try, because he believes that if you watch this, if you ever, ever, ever think that there's a chance that you could win, he can't stop you. Glory be to God. If you ever think that there's a chance that your God, hallelujah, can bring you through and bring you out, then he can't stop you. So he wants you to accept defeat before you even start. Saints of God, he wants you to believe that you are just a loser, always will be a loser, and never, ever a winner. But again, the devil is a liar. Now, when we look at this text and the application of the principle that God wants us to accept today, which is that you are undefeatable. Amen. That you are undefeatable. Again, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have losses. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have setbacks. 
but I decree and declare that you are in Christ undefeatable in Jesus name. Now the Bible says that God is going to go to work on you. Hallelujah. In fact, God is working on you right now. In fact, you already know that God is in you right now. And what is he doing? He's strengthening you in Jesus name that God is strengthening you. Now, when we look at this text in Hebrews 13, hallelujah, the tension in the text is this. Glory be to God, that in order for God to make you undefeatable, he has to and may often, hallelujah, he often must go into areas where you are struggling. Watch out now, hallelujah, where you feel insecure or where you may be vulnerable. Saints of God, I'm here to tell you today, when I was praying over this message, amen, I was really taken back. Hallelujah. And God opened up my eyes that God, watch this, in order to bring about the undefeatable attitude that you and I should have as believers, oftentimes he has to take us by the route of our defeats, by the route of our struggles, by the route, glory be to God, of our negative circumstances. Saints of God, because these are necessary in order, watch this, to flush out that defeated spirit, to flush out that construct that we will never, ever make a, anything out of ourselves to flush out that toxic attitude that we will never, ever rise again and be effective. So what does God do? The Bible says he strengthens you. He completes you. He perfects you. Hallelujah. That's not a one and off. Saints of God, that means that God is constantly strengthening you, working on you, even as you suffer some losses He's at work in you right now in Jesus name. He's at work even in the loss. He's at work even in that which you, hallelujah, are struggling with right now. Listen to me. Someone right there on the other side of the screen is struggling with sin. God is at work in you right now. Hallelujah. Can I encourage you today? Hallelujah. Resist the devil. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. God, saints of God, I'm praying for you right now that you will put up some resistance in Jesus name, that you'll say no, that you'll fight the enemy back in Jesus name. Watch this. God is at work in you, strengthening you, making you perfect, completing you, making you what you ought to be. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He's making you what you ought to be. You're not there yet, but he's making you what you ought to be. Glory be to God. You ought to be victorious. You ought to be an overcomer. You ought to be, hallelujah, glory to God, the head and not the tail. You ought to be above and not beneath. You ought to be, hallelujah, on the other side of this. And so God is at work in you right now, making you what you ought to be, helping you to adapt the mindset, the heart set, the soul set. Glory be to God of that of an undefeatable spirit in Jesus name. I thank God today for undefeatable spirit. And not only is that working, you making you what you ought to be, but the Bible says he's equipping you with everything good that you may carry out his will in Jesus name. Praise be to God today in Jesus name. God is equipping you. Come on, confess that right now. Say God is equipping me. Glory to God. God is supplying you. God is nurturing you. God is building you up in the area of your weakness, in the area of your struggle. God is building you up. Paul said it this way. Paul said, when I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. Glory be to God, because his strength is made perfect in my weakness. Glory be to God. So what is God doing? When you're struggling, saints of God, when you're being challenged, God is at work in you, strengthening you. Hallelujah. How do you think you're able to resist the devil? God is inside of you, strengthening you, giving you the resolve. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And I know, I know. Let's keep it real. You're saying, Tim, keep it real hundred. Hallelujah. Yes, I can will to do a thing, Tim. But sometimes the thing that I will to do, I don't do. And the thing that I will not to do, I don't want to do. That I find myself doing. I get that. Paul talked about that in Romans chapter seven. Hallelujah. I got both hands up and both feet too, wiggling all my toes and my fingers. Amen. Because I understand that. And we serve a Christ. We have a savior that understands that. That's why God is at work in you. Watch this. And he's giving you, equipping you. Saints of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. See, every time you have a setback, 
lesson learned. Every time you have a failure, lesson learned. Glory be to God. I call it discovery. Amen. Hallelujah. When you have a setback, when you have a failure, when you have a loss, it's discovery time. You ought to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you, what can I learn from this? What can I learn and take with me from this experience? How can I watch this fail forward? Amen. Glory be to God. How can I, hallelujah, advance when I get knocked down? Hallelujah. See, it's one thing to get knocked down, but it's another thing to advance after you get knocked down in Jesus' name. So God says, I'm at work in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you feel is insufficient. I know you feel, hallelujah, and can acknowledge that you have some deficiencies. I get it. I get it. I got them too. We feel insufficient. We feel deficient. We feel that we don't have what it takes. That's why God is at work in you. The Bible says he's working with you because he knows that you don't have what it takes, but he's equipping you with everything good. Hallelujah. He's taking out the bag, the bed, and giving you everything good so that you can carry out his will. Glory be to God. God's giving you strength. God's giving you wisdom so you can carry out his will in Jesus name. And the Bible says, while he himself works in you and accomplishes that which is pleasing in his sight. So simultaneously, watch this saints. This is beautiful. When I, this is why I can declare that God makes you undefeatable in Christ. So at the same time, that God is making you what you ought to be, strengthening you, completing you, perfecting you, making you what you ought to be. God is at the same time equipping you, hallelujah, with everything that you need, hallelujah, to carry out his will. But then at the same time, watch this, he's working in you to accomplish that which pleases him and brings him glory. See, beloved, God knows that you can't do it by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. See, stop believing that you can. Stop believing that you can make it by yourself. Stop believing that you can raise your family by yourself. Stop believing that you can overcome sin by yourself. Stop believing that you can make it in life without God. You can't, beloved. So God says, not only will I equip you, I'm going to work in you. Hallelujah to accomplish that which pleases me. See, every time you do something that's victorious, every time you do something that's good. Every time you do something that is of a quality, that is good, it can bring glory to God. You got to understand, don't take credit for that. That's God working himself in you to accomplish that which pleases him. See, God doesn't leave it to chance. Hallelujah. God goes to work in you. And as he works in you, he's working in you, saints of God, what you need. Hallelujah. Saints of God, some of us just need this. One more hour, one more day. Hallelujah, we need this, we need that. And God says, I'm gonna to go to work inside of you to accomplish my will. Hallelujah, the Bible said it this way. God works in you both to will and to do, both to desire it and to be able to do it. He gives you, watch this, glory be to God. He gives you the desire and then he follows that up with the ability and capability to get the job done. Come on, say I'm blessed. Hallelujah, that means that you are equipped to get the job done. And so he does this through Jesus Christ right now. It's been accomplished because Jesus Christ has died and gone back to heaven. So right now, God has made you undefeatable right now. And he says, I want you to celebrate this because what I'm doing inside of you is not to bring you pleasure, but to please me. Hallelujah. Now, will you feel good about it? Absolutely. Why? Because you know you just honored the Lord with your time. You just honored the Lord with your sacrifice. You just honored the Lord with your obedience. And so that brings God's glory. That brings him honor. Hallelujah. Because what you're doing is him working in you to do that which it pleases him. God doesn't want you to start something that you can't finish. So he gets inside of you. Hallelujah, to help bring that about in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And he says, I want you to give God glory forever and ever. See, saints of God, you're a legend. You're legendary. Come on, I'm going to say it right now. You are legendary. God is making you undefeatable so that you can be legendary in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. From one generation to the next, they're not going to brag necessarily about you, but they're going to brag about your God. 
what God did, how God did it. Amen. And that's your opportunity to let your light shine before men that they glorify your father, which is in heaven. See, when you do those things that please God, you're bringing glory to God. Hallelujah. And even in your struggle, when God brings you through that struggle, hallelujah, when God brings you through that loss, brings you through that divorce, brings you through that firing, brings you through that letdown, he's going to do it, brings you through that prison stint. God, going, he's going to do that, brings you in and out of the hospital. God's going to do it out of the nursing home. God's going to do it in Jesus name, sustains you while you're in it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He's rearranging you while you're in the struggle. He's taking things away and adding things to you while you're in the struggle so that you can do what? Please him and bring him glory forever and ever. Amen. So be it. It is so. And so it is. Why does God do this? Well, I'm telling you, he does this so that you can triumph. The Bible says that God wants us to be encouraged today because he wants us to know that God has done this Thanks be to God who always, always causes us to triumph, hallelujah, in Christ Jesus. So beloved, listen to this. When you hook those two things up, what is God saying? God is saying, stop expecting defeat. Go into every battle, go into every situation, go into every circumstance, believing that you are undefeatable in Jesus' name. Not that you won't have setbacks, not that you won't lose, not that you won't get disappointed, but that you will won't quit. That's the undefeated spirit. That's what God makes you. Because when you think about how God in the person of Jesus Christ triumphed over the devil, triumphed over sin, triumphed over death and the grave, hallelujah, and is seated now at the right hand of the Father, making intercession on your behalf. Saints of God, that's reason to thank God. Hallelujah. Right now, you got a Lord and a Savior. You got a high priest that's interceding on your behalf. As the enemy is trying to accuse you and defeat you and encourage you to have a defeatist attitude, God says, stop tripping. Hallelujah. Stop accepting. Stop expecting defeat in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Because saints of God, when you have a defeatist attitude, you will lose all of the time. To the point that it gets so bad that you won't even try. Can you imagine not trying in life? Can you imagine what that looks like? That you don't try to go to work. You don't try to make your marriage work. You don't try to raise your children. You don't try to live right as a young person. You don't try to overcome the obstacles in your way. Can you imagine what it'd be like to not try? That's a person who's hopeless. That's a person who's already defeated. Before they even step out on the court, before they even step out in life, before they even step out on the field, they're already defeated where? In their soul. Their thoughts, hallelujah, are about defeat. Their emotions are about defeat. But praise be to God. Christ always causes us to triumph. As God does this thing inside of us, we're going to begin to see that God is going to bring you the victory in Jesus name. Say, I already got it. Hallelujah. You, you already got what? The victory, the V I C T O R Y victory. I already have it in Jesus name. And so what God does, he always causes you to triumph. So if I'm going to stop expecting defeat, what am I going to start doing? I'm going to start expecting victory. See, saints of God, when you start expecting victory in Christ, you understand that your losses are part of God's plan and purpose for your life. You are able to have the perspective. Hallelujah. Like Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That's a perspective. Go ahead, King. Do what you got to do. Throw us into the lion's den, into the den of lions. But we will not, hallelujah, bow down and worship that idol. Do what you got to do, because if God doesn't, we know that he's able. See, that's not a defeated attitude. That's not a defeated attitude, saints of God. So you understand that your losses are part of God's plan, and he purposely will equip you to watch this, do everything good, hallelujah, that will bring him glory. So you stop, watch this, expecting defeat, and you start expecting victory. You stop 
expecting defeat and you start expecting victory. Now, God says, I'm going to use you, your life, your submission to my plan. I'm going to use you, hallelujah, as a trophy of my victory, of the victory in Christ. Let him do it. Hallelujah. Let him do it in your life. Let him do it. Hallelujah. In your life to the point, watch this, that your, watch this, watch this, that your lifestyle, your efforts now, glory be to God. What God is doing in your life is going to produce, watch this, a reputation, glory be to God, that God will be made known everywhere in Jesus name. Hallelujah. In other words, God's going to put you on display. He's going to put your life on a display as an example of what he can do to a life that is submitted to him. So beloved, I'm going to tell you right now in advance, I'm going to decree it something that you already know that you will suffer setbacks. You will have losses, but as long as you got the undefeated spirit, the undefeated attitude, you cannot be defeated. You cannot lose in Jesus name. You will not come out short, but you will come out victorious because God will lead you triumphantly as trophies of Christ's victory in Jesus name. See, it's not your victory. It's Jesus's victory. And you now are able by grace through faith to partake of the victory that Christ has secured for you in Jesus name. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today in Jesus name that in Christ, you make us undefeatable in Christ we have victory. And so I thank you today for your spirit. I thank you today for your strength and your anointing and your power. And I pray your perfect will be done in Jesus name. It is so. And so it is. Amen. Well, listen, beloved. Hallelujah. You prayed with us right there. Hallelujah. I want to invite you right now to get connected, get connected to God. I believe personally in the power of connection that if you connect to Christ, if you get connected to his church, and if you get connected to ministry, hallelujah, to ministry, your life will be able to be transformed. Hallelujah. And you'll make a difference in the world around you. You'll start becoming that, that fragrance. Glory be to God. Your life will become that fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere you go, all because you got connected to Christ, to his church, and to his commission. In Jesus' name. At this time, I want to invite you to give. I want to pray for you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As you have provided always, we pray and thank you for providing now and that every person will give and share. Hallelujah. As you have blessed them to do so in Jesus name, it is so. And so it is a man. And then finally, beloved, again, I want to encourage you follow the information on the screen right there. Hallelujah. Listen, if you are in the Detroit metropolitan area, won't you visit us? Hallelujah. Next Sunday, November 12th, as we celebrate 23 years of ministry in Jesus name. And then I want to also praise God. Hallelujah. God allowed our ministry this weekend to bless, license and consecrate ministers of the gospel and elders in the Lord's church. We thank God for their journey and that they have committed themselves to make their calling an election sure. We're praying for them. And we thank God for the elevation, hallelujah, of our assistant pastor and executive pastor. We thank God for the consecration of all those servants of the Lord who's going to help me continue to make a difference, hallelujah, in a mark that cannot be erased. Again, I thank God for you today. I pray that this message and this service has added value to your life. And hallelujah, be blessed, be encouraged. Until next week, God bless you. It is so, and so it is. You are undefeatable in Christ.